Luke 24, 36, 23, 46, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, to your, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. In Matthew 4, 17, from that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Dear friends in Christ, there are a lot of ways to consider the great love and grace of Jesus Christ during the 40 days of Lent. One of those ways is to look at the last seven sayings or words of Jesus as he hung on the cross that Good Friday. We're going to take that approach this year, but with a bit of a twist. We're going to tie Jesus' dying words to his lively teaching of parables that took place before that. Now, that might seem to you like a bit of a strange combination, but consider this fact. Jesus was perfectly consistent in his teaching and ministry. He never changed course, never wavered, never stalled out. He taught the same message throughout his public ministry, and he acted in perfect harmony with those words. You might say he talked the talk and he walked the walk of truth and love from beginning to end. So, what Jesus said on his way to the cross was in complete agreement with what he said on the cross, and that includes his teaching of parables. Now, in the coming weeks, we're going to compare six parables that Jesus used to reveal truth about God and his kingdom. Parables are often defined as an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. In other words, Jesus was revealing otherworldly truth and wisdom in the language that believers can understand. But only believers, by the working of the Holy Spirit, for everyone else in whom the Spirit has not worked, has sin-blinded hearts that can't see the Savior or understand his wisdom. Now, this evening, we're not going to do an extensive look at one of the parables. Instead, we're going to look at the cross itself as a parable, as part of that earthly story that tells of the kingdom of God as Jesus revealed it. We we'll see how Jesus really bookended his ministry, his public ministry, with the last words he said on the cross and what he began to say when he first was preaching after his baptism by John in the Jordan and his temptation in the wilderness. After that, he came out and we read the words I said a moment ago. But let's take a look. Remember, the last words Jesus said in his physical human life in the state of humiliation was, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Now, back up, look at the first words recorded, Jesus' first message in Matthew 4. Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Connection? Let's see what it is. When Jesus said, Repent, he was saying, Turn around. 180 degrees, turn away from sin's destructive lies and lifestyle. After all, God did not make humans to be ruled by and poisoned by sin, that fatal disobedience and rejection of God. Only God's ways of truth, only his love are good for us. Only God can give us life everlasting and true joy. So when Jesus said, repent, he was really saying, stop commending your soul and self to the devil and the sinful world's kingdom of death. That's not what God wants for you. That's not his plan, his desire. That's not his will for you to die in sin apart from him. No, God wants us to have a place in his kingdom, to commit and commend our lives into his hands every day of our lives. His kingdom is a kingdom of life, kingdom of light, <coughs> kingdom
kingdom of purity, a kingdom of peace. And since we could not get to that kingdom with our sin-flawed spirits, minds, and bodies, the kingdom came to us. The king himself lowered himself to be with us. Jesus brought the kingdom in his own person. He brought to us the door to God's presence. And in Jesus, <coughs> that door is opened. The way is clear. His sacrificial, substitutionary death forgives us. His shed blood washes away all of our guilt and sin in the eyes of God. Jesus' ministry and finally his death on that cross welcomes us into God's presence as redeemed, cleansed, adopted, loved children of God. And the Holy Spirit works faith in us that what Jesus did on that cross allows us to truly commit ourselves, to commend ourselves to the Father. We finally can say, Father, I commend my spirit into your hands. I give you who I am now because you have made me a new person, a living person, a redeemed, beloved child of yours. It's not just in the future, not just in heaven, but already now. We live in the kingdom of God. Oh, we wait the final payment when we get there and there's no more pain and suffering and tears. But the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus has turned around our very lives by laying down his life on the cross. The Lord made his cross, in a sense, into a parable for us. That thing which lifted him up to death, because of what he did on it, now lifts us up so that we can enter heaven. We can enter the presence of God. We can stand unafraid before the perfect and pure Lord of heaven, covered with Christ's forgiveness, covered with his love and grace. And we fear not because the Father welcomes those that his Son has purified. The Son of God enacted that parable. He not only taught us the way to heaven, he is the way to heaven. We'll learn more about that in the coming weeks as we tie Jesus' words on the cross with the words of teaching to the people of his day and to us in parables. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue our worship.